What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1974 Corvette Convertible by AMT. Now this classic is out of my own collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now here's a groovy kit going all the way back to 1974, and you know that she's a winner. This, of course, is the new Corvette Convertible by AMT. The 1974 Corvette was the first to have body-colored impact bumper treatment for both front and rear. This model kit has authentic interior detailing. You can also build a Stingray show car with these customizing parts. Bubble windshield, cockpit cover, wraparound windshield, side pipes, and airfoil roll bar. The 1974 Corvette was the last with a real dual exhaust, non-catalytic converter system. You can build this model kit one of three ways, street, strip, or show rod. The drag version has the blown big block V8, propels performance powerhouse, deep dish slotted mags, slicks, removable hardtop, on the cover it says Sunray Street version proves that the convertible is alive and well, which is pretty ironic considering that in 1975 the convertible was phased out. 1975 was the last year with the 454 cubic inch engine on the option list. Now it's time to take the lid off this great model kit to see what's in the box. Now this model kit was owned by someone else before so you can see that they tried to paint the body on this. However, here we have our instructions for our Corvette convertible. The body itself painted in a myriad of colors which was stripped off through some means. Then we have all the components. They are just sort of scattered loose in here. There's our glass windshields, which look like they need a cleaning. A um, couple of parts here, hood and rims. All sorts of neat things. There's some competition bits and some more glass. There's our <laughs> exhaust with the catalytic converter, which is not supposed to be in there, <laughs> according to the history. Under pan, there's our interior bucket. And then um, part of the 454. Lots of neat competition bits. Our front bumpers. And then we got chrome. And more chrome, lots of competition bits in this old kit, which is very nice. And then tires and a whole bunch of loose things. The instruction sheet for this model car is very simplified and consists of six panels. Although the instruction sheet is boiled down to six panels, there are a lot of parts in this model kit that make it really exciting for a car produced in the year of the Tiger. So to give this car some roar, here's the engine block. We have right and left hand side with the transmission molded on, an oil pan, the starter motor, the front timing cover, the alternator, fan belt, fan, intake manifold, radiator hose, distributor with the shield, the carburetor, air cleaner, valve covers, you get a choice of custom or stock, the cylinder heads, the stock exhaust manifold, the custom manifold, and then for the custom we have the distributor, the intake manifold, four carburetors, and the radiator hose. And if that wasn't enough, here is the drag and alternate custom version. Again, with our engine block right and left, a chrome front cover, starter motor, alternator, the extended belt, the supercharger belt, the fuel pump, the injector top and bottom, the supercharger itself, the intake manifold, the back cover for the supercharger, the front cover for the supercharger, a magneto, valve covers, chrome ones, and cylinder head, oil pan, and exhaust headers. And now to move you down the street faster than the Bay City Rollers, we have our wheels and tire combination. Here we have stock and custom, which includes four disc brakes, four wheel inners, four tires, and four stock or four mag wheels. Along the back we have the drag wheel and tire combination, which has two disc brakes in the front, the front tires and two mag wheels, 
And in the back we've got the deep dish mag wheels, the drag wheel enters, and two slicks. Panel 3 is our chassis panel, and you get a lot of details back here. You get the upper differential half with the spring molded on, the rear axle, which you do not cement. You get two control arms right and left, two shock absorbers right and left, the lower differential half, the drive shaft, the spare tire cover, and you can assemble your wheels right onto this after you've dropped it all in. Don't forget your stabilizer bar. And continuing with our chassis assembly, we have the stock exhaust pipes dropping in, a frame brace, our control arms, the upper A arms, the springs, we have the front uprights with a pin in it, attaching on those front wheels. Then here we have a front stabilizer, radiator wall with a radiator fan shroud on here, and two front fender aprons. Panel 4 shows our interior going together. There are quite a few options in here. You get the stock bucket seats, or you can switch them out for the custom and race seats, a firewall, steering wheel, dashboard, interior bucket tub, and a two-piece roll bar. Step 5 shows our body assembly. Here we have our optional hardtop roof with the glass, the roll bar, the body, the custom windshield or the front stock windshield. It's your choice. Here we have a tonneau cover with a bubble window. Then our rear bumper goes on the back. You've got an option of two different types of tail lamps. And then there's our interior going up into the body. Panel 6 continues with our final assemblies. And this is for the stock and drag race version. Here we have a clear hood scoop going onto this custom hood for clearance for the blower. Then we have a parachute gluing onto the back for the drag racer, as well as side exhausts. And then here we have our grill going on place. And if you want the stock hood, there's the option for it. And the final piece of these instructions is of course our custom assembly. Again, using the drag hood scoop and hood the side lake pipes, and our front end. Here's our Corvette body for 1974, and one way to make sure that this is an authentic 1974 Corvette is of course by looking at the identifying cues of these body styles. One thing that they did have in 74 to identify it is this great big medallion up front on the brace here, which of course proves that it's a 74. In 1975 they shrunk the medallion down to about half this size. Now, even though this body has been painted and stripped, you can still see that it is very accurate to the 74. You can see the sugar scoop indentation in here. Underneath there are quite a bit of mold marks, which I'll have to clean out when I build this model car. Anyway, the script is nice. It's got Cor or Stingray or something on here. Yeah, Stingray. I can see it now. <laughs> Looks like they were trying for some kind of race car effect, whoever owned this before. There is one sort of sad note though, I think they cut their masking tape on the body itself. So there's a nice groove in here for me to try to fix somehow. But overall, if you find one of these old kits, hopefully it will be more not touched than mine is. Here we have the front and rear impact bumpers for 1974, which is accurate to the car, because 1973 was the last year to use those chrome bumpers from 1972. However, 73 had the first impact front bumper on it, so now for 74 we have the complete picture. There is one issue to note though, this is more of a 75 rear bumper, because in 1975 they figured out a way to mold this as one solid piece at GM. However, to be accurate for 74, you need a small line up the center to show a right and left hand side version because that's the way they figured out how to do it for 74. So how do these components fit onto the body of the car? Actually, they are quite a nice fit with the front being really tight on here. As you can see, it doesn't want to shake off. And then the back, of course, will go on there nice and easy. And again, it looks quite nice. There is only one issue that I have with the back part is the amount of sink marks in it. So you have to use some filler and sandpaper and be very careful. There's one here on the side. And then there are a couple under the Corvette emblem, which will be really tricky. I do like to use some masking tape just to cover over the emblem or the script, I should say. And uh, there is also a little bit of a dip in here, which I don't know if I can get out. 
However, these rear bumpers for 74 were pretty crude, so some of those sink marks could be left in for a bit of authenticity. Eight white parts trees make up the model kit itself. These consist of multiple parts. On this parts tree, we have the chassis, the brace, and the differential. And if I just bring this up to the camera, you can see all the nice detail on that chassis. Turning the chassis over, we do see some mold marks, which of course will be taken out with sandpaper or number 16 hobby blade. Here we have the sprue that makes up the engine block, and one of my engine block halves has become detached. But if we bring this up to the camera again, you can see all that nice detail work. Very nice for a model kit made back in 1973. Here we have the rear wheels, the disc brakes, that funky roll bar, and our interior right here. And bringing this back up into the camera, you can see a lot of mold marks in the back here under the seats, which are not too bad. There is some interior panel detail in here, which is quite nice. But again, being a tub, you can't really get too nice detail in there because of the way they're all molded in. You do get these floor pedals. And turning this over, of course, we get the nice clean side, which is amazing that they can't put the mold marks on the back here, but they can put them right into your interior. However, overall, still very nicely done. Now this parts tree is sort of a mixed bag between the custom drag racing parts and the stock components. However, they do share all these chassis bits. There's our tonneau cover for racing, and here is our roof section. Bringing this up into the camera again, you can see the nice detail on the tonneau cover. There is a pattern here, as well as the little rivets that go on there. Our A-arms and steering assembly look quite nice. There are some mold marks on the back end of the springs, but overall, still very nice. A couple of mold buttons in here which need to be removed, but again, for the vintage, excellent. Here again, we have an interesting mix of parts for this car. There are the aprons for underneath on our wheels. We've got our drag racing hood with the hole here, stock intake manifold and air cleaner and carburetor. Then here we have our firewall and our differential pieces. And there is quite a lot of flash on this, but again, bringing it up to the camera, you can see there is some soft, nice detail in on that firewall. The intake manifold is quite nice. And overall, again, very good for the vintage. This parts tree displays the wheel backs and the hood. And there's that nice grill on the hood, accurate to the year. Turning it over, we do have some mold marks in the corners. And there is a nice texture here for our fiberglass hood. Here we have our left and right control arms, our roll bar, our parachute, our radiator, the fan shroud, the spare tire cover, our exhaust pipe with a muffler, control arms, and our rear axle. Here we have our stock bucket seats as well as the custom racing bucket seats, our three-spoke steering wheel, and our dashboard to help us to remember that you're a Womble. Here we have our chrome components, which are kind of dusty for some reason. I can't quite explain that. Here we have the chrome rear bumpers for a 72 Corvette, but they're not needed in this kit because we have that impact bumper in the back. Here's the rally wheels from GM, as well as our slotted mag wheels. There we have our four SU carburetors, the intake manifold, and all the rest for our custom bits. And then of course our chrome valve covers and the blower. There's our lake pipes as well. So let's bring this up into the lens and see just how nice that detail is. Very crisp for the era. And again, quite excellent. Turning it over onto the back. Not too many mold marks, some on the back of the manifolds. And again, there's the one for the carburetors. Quite nice, very excellent. Here we have our glass components. We've got this little bubble windshield for racing as well as a full race window, our rear window for the stock top, our front glass, the clear hood scoop, and then our tail lights. Sadly, I'm missing one of the custom ones, but that's okay because I want to build it stock for my build. And all these are pretty nicely done. There is only one problem I have, and that is a bit of tire burn in the glass from a tire sitting on it. But overall, those are our clear parts. Here we have some very accurate tires for 1974 included in this kit. And I wish they would bring out more of these in current kits. These tires are a bit dusty. I can't explain it. Same for the glass. 
However, anyway, these are Goodyear belted tires, polyglass belted tires, which is a vast improvement over the original bias ply tires of earlier years. Not quite the radial type of tire, but getting very close. And here, of course, we have our Goodyear Blue Streak Drag Slicks. Now, quickly looking at our stock tires, you can see a nice tread on here. Pretty unusual type of tread based on other AMT tires. But again, very nice. Just need to put these in your wheel spinner and give them a little bit of a go. And our drag slicks are really rock hard. Again, that might just be because of the vintage. But overall, I'll give these tires a very high mark. And that completes our look at our AMT 1974 Corvette convertible. And if you've built this model kit in the past, why not share it with us on our Facebook page? I'll leave the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to take a look at the AMT Corvette Convertible for 1974. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!